Hey guys, and welcome to today's project of making Victoria Sponge a classical cake with a not-so-classical approach. The list of ingredients is in the description. The reason why I tried a different approach is to see if I can make the cake more moist and at the same time fluffier. It turns out you can. This is how I did it. Let's start with the basic understanding of the Victoria Sponge. The classic Victoria Sponge is simple enough in the sense that it is an equal measurement of butter, sugar, flour and eggs. Later on, flavorings and raising agents were introduced. If you were to make a 1 kilo recipe, your butter or fat would be 25%, sugar 25%, flour 25% and eggs at 25%. However, I have decided to change the fat slightly. The percentage still remains the same of 25% overall, but within that 25%, which makes it 250 grams, instead of it being full butter, which can harden and dry out the sponge over time, I will use 75% butter, making it 187.5 grams butter and 62.5 grams of vegetable neutral oil as the other form of fat. Now, in a traditional sense, we would beat the fat, but here we will be using a whisk to whip air into the fat to make it lighter. Just look at that, it looks light already. Now for the sugar. This is also at 250 grams of total sugar, but divided into two at 125 grams and 125 grams. Normally, you would beat all of the sugar with the fat, but in this case, we will be splitting half of the sugar for the fat and half of the sugar for the eggs. As well in the meantime, we want to flavor the sponge. Here, I have half a dried vanilla pod. Let's keep it simple, which is the base flavor of vanilla. Crush the pod into vanilla dust using a pestle and mortar now pour it into the butter, bring it back to the mixer and let that go again for a couple of minutes to incorporate everything together. Give the bowl a good scrape down. Bring it back and now slowly pour in the oil. We are now creating a fat emulsion. My goodness, doesn't that look creamy already? Now, that is full of air. Keep that to one side for now. Now place into another mixing bowl 250 grams of whole eggs and the other half of the sugar. Use a clean whisk attachment and we're going to whisk air into it. Let that go for a couple of minutes. It will triple in size and turn pale. That too looks mighty creamy and smooth. That is ready when you can draw lines and it can hold itself up. Now for the last component, the flour. Measure out 250 grams of self-raising flour. Now take a large bowl. Place the butter oil mixture in. We're going to fold the flour and egg mixture in in stages. Sieve half of the flour mix over the butter mixture and fold gently to incorporate everything together. Once that is mixed in, pour half of the egg mixture in. Doing it this way ensures that everything is not overmixed. Gently fold everything together, going around in circles. Sieve in the remaining flour and mix again. Then the last amount of the egg mixture. You will end up with a very light in texture batter. We will be dividing this into two sponge 8 inch non stick baking tins. A Victoria sponge works well when baked separately and then sandwiched together later on. I lined my baking tins with paper just in case. Make sure you divide the mixture by half. Bake it in an oven set at 170 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes to start. After the timer has gone off, take your cake out when they are ready. You might have to add one or two minutes here or there, depending on your oven. You will know they are ready when you stick in a toothpick or skewer and it comes out clean. My second cake needed a few more minutes due to where it was placed in the oven, but that too now is ready. There you go, a well-cooked cake without the middle collapsing. 
Let that cool down for about 30 minutes in the tin. Once you're able to handle the tin, take the cake out. You can use a plate or if you have big hands like me, you can just twist the cake slightly and it will come out just like that. The baking paper I placed underneath helped. Take a cooling rack and place the cake on top to fully cool down. The sponge was baked evenly as you can see from the even color all around. Once the sponge has fully cooled, wrap them up in clean film if you want to build the cake the next day or if you want to store the sponge for another time. This sponge can be frozen like this for up to 3 months nicely wrapped up. The next day. Unwrap the sponge and place it on a cake board. Take some homemade raspberry jam. I made some earlier, but not too much and spread it evenly all around the sponge top. A link for the recipe video is on the top right corner here. Next for the cream filling. Here I will be making a basic cream filling, but better. Take a large bowl and pour in 300 grams of double cream and then place a sieve on the top and pour in 60 grams of icing sugar along with a pinch of vanilla dust. Then take 200 grams of mascarpone cheese and then soften it slightly with a rubber spatula. The cheese will give it that rich creamy texture that we want and to keep the double cream stable as well as giving it structure without over whipping it. Whisk it until you see it coming together. Now you can take a piping bag and a round tip nozzle. Fill the bag. Do whatever shape you want, but here I'm doing teardrop shapes inwards. I like a design like this because then you can see the cream filling and also the raspberry jam in between. You can run your fingers over the filling to make it smooth. Now for the final element, a dusting of icing sugar. All you have to do now is cut yourself a decent slice. Just take a look at that nicely even baked sponge on the inside. Time to have a bite. Oh my goodness, that is so so good. It just melts in your mouth. It is crumbly, light, fluffy, creamy, rich, and one hell of a party in my mouth. Well, there you have it. My take on the classic Victoria sponge with a twist on the procedure. A little more time and effort to make this, but the payoff was worth it. In the meantime, I'm gonna go and finish this slice and thank you for watching. As usual, it was a pleasure having you with us on this journey today. If you enjoyed what you watch, please leave a like, comment down below and subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos and we shall see you in the next one. Bye for now.